From up in the sky to below the Earth's surface, we are still discovering the mysteries of the world. Some of these discoveries bring us closer to protecting our environment, some still leave us with more questions. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent discoveries. Discovery of a dying supermassive black hole via a 3,000-year-long light echo Black holes are unquestionably the most feared and unknown cosmic object in our known universe. Furthermore, there is at least one hiding in almost every single galaxy. Sometimes referred to as the dark hearts of galaxies, black holes are a subject of fascination for many. At the center of our very own Milky Way, there is thought to lie a supermassive black hole potentially with a mass worth billions of times that of our Sun. The scientific term used for these supermassive black holes is AGN, known as active galactic nuclei. These AGNs give out tons of radiation in a similar way to how radio waves or X-rays produce radiation. They are also the reason why you can sometimes visibly see jets of ionized gases in cosmic photographs. AGNs are not eternal, however, and as all things in the universe someday, they do have a life that eventually expires. After a considerable amount of time, an AGN will shut down. But the reasoning for this, or the process of how it occurs, remains unknown to astronomers. Koei Ishikawa, a top researcher at Tohoku University in Sendai, Japan, has come across new information that might give us more insight into these massive black holes. Ishikawa observed the galaxy of ARP-187 and found what he and his colleagues believed to be a dying AGN. When searching the galaxy, they found the telltale signs of twin jets of ionized gases showing up on their photographs but were unable to find any radio waves coming from ARP-187. All active nuclei produce radio waves. A secondary look into the galaxy using NASA's New Star, short for Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array, was supposed to show the number of X-rays coming from the galaxy, but despite the advanced technology, there was little to no X-ray traces found. The data is currently inconclusive, but the majority of scientists believe that while Ishikawa was incorrect that the AGN was still alive, they do believe it was there, but that it died off thousands of years ago, leaving only a large AGN jet trace behind, a light echo of what once was. If there is one amazing thing about humanity, it is our persistence to never stop learning. Endlessly, we try to reach new lengths, to find out more about the universe, to discover our place in the bigger picture, and to find our purpose. No matter what may come in the future, we can rest assured that we will never stop trying to expand our knowledge and understanding. There are probably almost twice as many Earth-like planets than we thought. The wide open space stretched above us continues to amaze and inspire. Over the past 18 years, astronomers have distinguished 1,038 planets orbiting distant stars in a similar pattern to that of Earth. Disappointingly, the vast majority are unlikely candidates to support life. Some are too close to their home star and others too far away. The perfect sweet spot for fostering life is only known to be managed on Earth. Or so we thought. A recent development by a group of renowned astronomers from the University of California, Berkeley and the University of Hawaii have countered this accepted idea. The scientists published an article that suggests we may have overlooked evidence of a vast number of Earth-sized exoplanets in the habitable zone of their stars. They claim that we have missed important exoplanets because these planets are nearly impossible to detect with our current technology. They hypothesize that an estimated 22% of stars with similar attributes as our Sun harbor a planet that is roughly Earth-sized in their habitable zones. With about 100 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy, that is about 20 billion such planets, said Andrew Howard, one of the researchers on the study. That is a few Earth-sized planets for every human being on the planet Earth. The team, led by Eric Pettigura, came to these conclusions by taking an unprecedented approach to their study. Historically, 
astronomers have counted visible exoplanets to determine the number of habitable planets. The new team set out to discover the planets we are unable to see. Exoplanets are traditionally detected by studying the rhythmic dimming in a star's brightness. Each dimming indicates a planet that is passing between the star and our viewpoint. This method is very effective at spotting large planets that orbit closely to their stars. However, smaller planets and those who are farther away from the star do not cause a noticeable dimming of their central star. To account for these missing exoplanets, the Berkeley team deployed a software program that analyzed data from the Kepler mission, a NASA telescope launched in 2009. The program was a success. The program successfully located exoplanets previously missed by astronomers. Furthermore, the program was able to determine which planets had qualities similar to Earth, making them possible for life. The software within the Kepler telescope found 10 potential exoplanets that are of similar size to Earth and orbit in what is likely the star's habitable zone. This aligned with the historical hypothesis by other well-known astronomers. With newfound validation to their original theory, world-renowned astronomers joined the effort to locate more hidden exoplanets. The team tested the software by artificially introducing exoplanets similar to Earth, by feeding obscure data into the planet detection program. The software was only able to distinguish about 1% of the artificial planets introduced, with the vast majority being undetectable still. While this served a humble blow to the project, there prevailed a silver lining. The results only proved that 99% of Earth-like exoplanets are likely being undetected by our current methodology. This opens a world of possibilities for finding life beyond Earth. It is still unknown whether any of these planets could have the other necessary components to foster life, a protective atmosphere, water and carbon. However, astronomers are given a newfound hope for finding extraterrestrial life. Egyptian Mummy's Unusual Mud Shell Mummies wrapped in strips of linen are a well-known phenomenon of ancient Egypt. However, these burial methods were usually reserved for the very wealthy, and less is known about how the working class buried their loved ones. That is, until CT scans of a mummy dating back to around 1200 BC gave a few hints. The mummy is encased in a dried mud shell in between the standard layers of linen wrapping. This caked mud method is incredibly interesting, as archaeologists have never encountered a preservation technique using mud before. They plan to study this mummy carefully to determine what the mud could have accomplished, but their first guess is that it was used as a way to preserve and prepare the body for burial in a way that was both affordable for the common man and resembled the methods used by royalty and the very wealthy. The body is also damaged, and archaeologists theorize that the mud could have been used to repair damage to the mummy after grave robbers fractured the legs. As ancient Egyptians believed that the state of the entombed body directly reflected the state of the body in the afterlife, it would have been imperative for the family members of the deceased to repair the damage caused by grave robbers so that their loved one could continue to live on in the afterlife with a whole body. The mud appears to have been spread intentionally and with great precision and care. While it is a couple of centimeters thick over the damaged legs, it spreads to cover the entire body in thinner layers. Over the face, for example, it is a mere 1.5 millimeters thick. Additionally, it seems that the mud over the face was painted with white and red limestone and mineral pigments. Although further analysis of the colored flakes is required to determine the exact pattern and painting style of this face paint, some believe that it might have been an attempt to imitate the painting of elaborate masks that were placed over mummies' faces before enclosing them in sarcophagi for burial. Some archaeologists speculate that this potential imitation of the burial of higher individuals in society was also why the mud layer was applied in the first place, as it seems to resemble the resin layer placed on the mummies of pharaohs and members of the royal retinue. Imitation of the monarchs was very important to ancient Egyptians, as social status was largely determined by how closely you could come to the expensive metals, jewels and materials that the pharaoh wore. Resin layers, preservation, rituals and even mummification in general were incredibly expensive. 
and the mud layer might have been a way to emulate a much more lavish burial. However, at this point, all of these theories are merely speculation, as it is not even clear where the mud-caked individual ranked in society. They could have been very rich or incredibly poor, and whichever side of this spectrum that they end up being on could make one of the theories incredibly more probable than the others. For now, the reasoning of the lone mummy covered in mud remains just one more enduring mystery to be solved. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please help us grow this community by liking and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.